Empowerment Worship Center in Ghana and the other African countries joining us tonight. We're going to have a fantastic time in worship in Jesus' name. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. Setting, save, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. You can do your faithful and true. Though 
Well, hallelujah, tonight I greet you in the name of Jesus all the way from beautiful South Africa, all the beautiful people of Ghana. What a great honor and a privilege to be with you tonight. Empowerment Worship Center, Prophet Gideon Danso. What a great honor and a great privilege to be with you. Thank you for this kind invitation to share God's message of hope in this critical hour in our world. I know that God is up to something and I believe tonight God is going to come wherever you are and He's going to touch you and He's going to change you. You know, we're living in a world that is in a crisis mode. But I want to tell you tonight that God is still on the throne and that Jesus Christ is still in control. And we are living in the greatest time where we are going to see a move of God. So I greet you tonight. Come on, give somebody in your home, in your church, wherever you are, a big high five and give the Lord Jesus a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, if God is for us, who can be against us? David said, I will exalt the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And tonight, no matter what we face, no matter where we are, no matter how low we feel, we can always find the time to give Jesus Christ the praise and the glory because He's worthy tonight. Come on, every citizen of Ghana, every pastor in Ghana, every member of this great church tonight, give the Lord the loudest praise that you can in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share with you tonight from Psalm 68 and my message, let God arise. More than ever, we need to see a move of God. And when you listen to the media and you listen to what people say, the naysayers, the skeptics, people say the world will never be the same again. And I agree, the world is going to be better because God is going to intervene in our world and God is going to put the enemy to flight and God is going to move mountains in Jesus' name and God is going to show Himself strong on behalf of those who believe in Him in Jesus' name. Psalm 68, and I read from verse 1, the Bible says, Let God arise and let the enemies be scattered. That includes the enemy of COVID, the enemy of depression, the enemy of fear, the enemy of poverty, let God arise and let the enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate you flee before Him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Hallelujah. Let them rejoice before the Lord. I don't want to jump ahead of myself tonight. But sometimes people say, I have no reason to rejoice, Pastor. You don't understand what I'm facing, what I'm going through. I want to tell you tonight that you have reason to rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life tonight. Hallelujah. You've been born again. You were blind, but now you see. And God is on your side. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. There's still a reason for you to rejoice. Even if there is no hurt in the stall. Even if there's no money in the bank. Even if you don't know what the future holds, you can still rejoice because you know God holds the future. God holds your future right there in Ghana, throughout Africa, in the nations of the world. God holds your future in the palm of His hand. Oh, come on, my brother. Come on, my sister tonight. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. The Lord is at hand. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you that God's arm is not too short that God is not on a journey, that God is still able, that God is still capable, that God is still the Almighty God, that His name is still above every other name and at the name of Jesus, every knee shall still bow. This COVID devil will bow, cancer will bow, sickness and disease will bow, fear will bow in the name of Jesus. So I wanna echo David's words tonight and I wanna shout it out, let God arise. Come on, say it tonight, let God arise, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody, say it tonight. Let God arise and let the enemy be scattered in Jesus' name. But let the righteous be glad and let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God. Sing praises to God. Sing praises to His name. Extol Him who rides on the clouds 
by His name, Yah, the Holy One, Yahweh, and rejoice before Him. I want to say it again, that Jesus is still in control. I want to say again, that His name is still exalted. I want to say it, that we should not magnify any other name, but we should magnify the name of Jesus and keep hope alive in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight, I don't know what you are facing, what you are going through. I know that the whole world is in a crisis mode. There's so much uncertainty. People are gripped by fear. People fear the future. But God still says, I know the thoughts I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. When we don't know, we should remind ourselves that God knows. When things seem to be out of control, we should remind ourselves that our God is still very much in control. And I believe with all my heart, before the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to see a move of God that is going to cover this globe as the waters cover the sea. We are going to see an outpouring of God's glory from Africa throughout to the nations of the world. We are going to see God move in South Africa. God's going to move in Namibia. God's going to move in Congo. God is going to move in Malawi. God is going to move in Ivory Coast. God is going to move in Ghana. God is going to move in Nigeria. And I want to tell you, when God moves, there ain't no devil in hell that can stop this mighty move of God. For our God is an awesome God. Our God is a mighty God. Our God is exalted in His name. He's worthy. Oh, come on tonight there in Ghana. Give Him a praise. Let's change the atmosphere over our nations and over our cities in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're in a valley tonight. Maybe like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, you are in a fiery furnace. I don't know. But I know that you are not alone. I know that Jesus is with you. And when the fire gets at its hottest, that's when Jesus, the fourth man, is going to show up and He's going to keep you and He's going to sustain you and He's going to deliver you for His glory in Jesus' name. Maybe you're in a storm tonight. Maybe you're unsure about your tomorrow. Maybe you are fighting this virus that have so many people gripped and you're afraid of death. I want to tell you tonight that Jesus has overcome death and that Jesus Christ is still the the, the resurrection and the life. And even if your situation, your Lazarus has been in the grave for four days, he's still able to resurrect Lazarus in Jesus' name. Maybe you need God to move in your marriage, in your finances. In South Africa, we need a mighty move of God. We need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I want to start by saying tonight to every believer that God has not abandoned you, that God has not forsaken you and that God is not asleep. That even as Satan has put his foot on the church of Jesus Christ and as the devil has disrupted our world, you better get ready for God to move because Jesus Himself is going to step into the church. Jesus Himself is going to step into our world and things are going to be different. I want to tell you, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, suddenly there's going to be a move of God and we are going to see Jesus Himself step into churches like this church. He's going to come and He's going to stand in the gap as He did 2,000 years ago and we are going to see a mighty turnaround and I prophesy tonight the way that this COVID-19 came, the same way it is going to go suddenly, not by might, nor by power, but by the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. Come on, give Him praise there where you are tonight. In the name of Jesus. Our God is still a present help in times of need. He's still a mighty deliverer. When people talk about God as if God is not able, God has to defend Himself. And He says, is anything too difficult for me? I know not. Bible says in Mark 10, 27, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God, for with God all things are possible. The Bible says God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. So you may be in a lion's den tonight. I want to tell you that God is able to shut the lion's mouth. You may be in a dark prison somewhere in isolation. 
I want you to know that God is able to deliver you from the prison, that God can get you to the palace. God knows how to sustain you through the pit, how to sustain you through part of His house, how to sustain you in your prison hour. And He knows how to bring you through so that even the very things that were meant to harm you, God's going to use to bless you. The very things that were meant to destroy you, God's going to use to build you. The very things that were intended for evil, God is going to turn around for your good. Because the Bible says, weeping endures for a moment, but joy comes again in the morning. Hallelujah. We are not going to be stuck in this moment of despair and a moment of despondency. You may be in a valley like Elijah of discouragement, but tonight God is coming to you. And God says, it's not time to sit down. It's not time to give up hope. It's time to arise and shine for God is with you. Shout hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So when God arises and God is going to arise, Ghana, I said, you better get ready for God to arise. I have such an expectation in South Africa. There's so much negativity and I have learned that the darker the hour, the greater the manifestation of God's light will be. So while the world is being shaken, as Christians we should be steadfast and anchored in hope because we know what the world does not know. We know that God is with us in the fire. We know that Jesus walks us through the valley as our good shepherd. We know that God is able to provide in the most uncertain times that God can provide at the brook Cherith. God can provide through the widow's house. God can still get the manna and the quail to you because there is nothing God cannot do. Oh, I know that God is going to move. I know that God is going to move His hand. And there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost as this world has never seen. There's going to be not a revival, but a visitation. A sovereign move of God so that that sick people are going to be healed without even a hand being laid upon them. Tonight is your night right where you are, where I believe that God is going to stretch forth His hand and He's going to heal you and He's going to deliver you and He's going to bless you and He's going to lift you up. And He's going to take away the hopelessness and the despair. And He's going to show you the future and the dream that He has for your life. That these circumstances, this COVID disease, this lockdown does not mean God's heaven is shut down. This means it's a time for God to show Himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal towards Him. Come on. Three things that will happen when God arises. Number one, the enemy will scatter. Say it tonight, say it, even if in your home, I don't know where you're watching this from, but say it tonight, say the devil is about to run. (laughs) Number two, the hills and the mountains will melt like wax at the presence of God. That means your problems are going to disappear suddenly. You're going to walk into a place like this and suddenly the depression is going to be gone. Suddenly the yoke is going to be broken. Suddenly the shackles are going to fall from you in Jesus' name. Suddenly there's going to be a divine release of God's favor in your life. Suddenly the arthritis is going to be out of your body. The pain in your kidneys are going to be gone. God's going to touch you. Every problem, every mountain will bow its knee at the mention of the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, there is no mountain. He cannot move. There is no storm. He cannot calm. There is no river He can't get you through. There's no fire He cannot sustain you in. There is nothing impossible without God tonight. He still is El Elyon. He still is high and lifted up. He still is King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus, let us exalt Him. And then number three, He's going to fill your heart with joy. Not on the other side of the valley, but in the valley. While you walk through the valley, His joy and His peace, the two things Satan wants to steal from you, is going to be restored. John chapter 16, 33, Jesus said, These things I've spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Maybe you've shed a tear, I don't know. But it's time to rejoice. It's time to get happy. It's time to be glad. It's time to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. It's time to 
put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven has come and it's time to get a bounce back in your step in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to glory in the goodness of God. It's time to joy in the God of your salvation. It's time to break out in a spirit of praise and worship. Even though you are surrounded by the walls of Jericho, even though you might be in a shutdown in a prison hour, like a fallen Silas, you may be sitting in a whale's belly in digestive juices, circumstances trying to consume you. But I'm telling you tonight, you have to put on the garment of praise. You have to rejoice in the Lord always. You have to change your attitude. You have to stand up in the name of Jesus Christ in the midst of your crisis. And you have to stand strong and you have to praise the Lord with a voice loud and high in Jesus' name. Can I get somebody tonight for 10 seconds to jump to your feet and give the Lord a praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In, 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 in my early years in Bloomingdale, when this revival broke out, I was praying one morning and God showed me uh, like the Israelites being encamped and I saw the hordes of hell marching against them, structured, organized, like these principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual weakness in high places, trying to shut down Christianity, trying to establish a new world order. And although certain things have to change, it is not the time for Jesus to come back. First, the gospel has to be preached to the nations. Satan does not have the power to preempt the will of God and the end time harvest. But as I saw these forces of darkness arrayed, structured, marching against the people of God, I saw the Israelites, the children of God, I saw them break out in dancing and singing and rejoicing. And as they did that, the first thing I noticed on the faces of the demonic forces and principalities was an utter look of confusion. They were confused and stopped by the praise, by the rejoicing of God's people. And they began to break rank from the least to the greatest. And they began to scatter. And I heard the voice of the Holy Ghost say, the voice on the battleground is a voice of rejoicing. I want to tell you, church, we have to keep rejoicing alive. The Bible says the voice of salvation and rejoicing will be in the tabernacle of the righteous more than ever. We need to use the weapon not only of prayer, but the weapon of rejoicing. Hallelujah. We have to joy in the God of our salvation. We have to remind ourselves that God is good and His mercy endures forever, even as Jehoshaphat did on the battleground. When God reminded them, when three armies faced them, surrounded, facing innumerable odds, no way out in the natural. What did God say to the people? Fear not. Do not be dismayed because of this multitude. For the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Position yourself. Stand still. And you will see the salvation of the Lord your God. That's what we have to do. When, when, when we talk about standing still, I'm not saying stand inactive. I'm saying stand still. Stand on the Word of God. Stand up in the fire like a Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Stand your ground in the lion's den. Stand tall for God when you are being persecuted. And keep the voice of rejoicing and the voice of praise alive. We know the Bible says when they began to praise. And they set musicians before the army. Not a typical battle strategy because everybody is expecting a scientist, a doctor to come and deliver us. But I want to tell you that God's going to deliver His people. That God is going to come and be the deliverer. That God is going to show Himself strong. That God is going to move His hand over the waters. That is the sea of humanity. And God is going to bring a great calm. And God is going to bring a great peace. And God is going to bring a great revival. And there will be a restoration. And there will be a, a, a healing move like we have never seen in Jesus' name. And people are going to fall on their knees and they are going to cry out for God. But we have to keep the temperature, the right temperature. Because our God is a consuming fire. We can't sit down and give up and murmur and complain. We have to keep our eyes focused. We have to look heavenward. And we have to believe that God 
is going to arise in our world. God is going to arise in Africa. God is going to arise in America. God is going to arise in South America. God is going to arise in Europe. And as this virus has come and as it has locked this world down, God is going to come and God's going to liberate this world. Even though the fire has been heated seven times more, our God is alive. I said our God is alive. And those people on the battleground, think about this picture of this. There are armies, hordes of hell marching against them. They have no hope. But they set their hearts to see God. And God gave them a word of deliverance. And then God said, set the musicians, the Levites, in the front of the army. And I want to say to you, I know Pastor Russell, my good friend from Planet Shakers, is also speaking in this conference. And God is using him to reignite the passion for praise in the body of Christ and to open people's eyes in the understanding of what a powerful weapon praise is. A weapon that binds the powers of princes of darkness. Opposite to what we want to do. We want to fight in the natural. We want to be in control. But God says, no, you, you let go. God says, no, you position yourself in my presence and you shout unto me with a shout of joy. You put on the garment of praise, hallelujah. And you remind yourself and you declare it over your situation, over your marriage, over your finances, over your nation. You declare it for the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Come on, Ghana. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. And when they began to praise God, when they began to worship God, what happened? God arose and He caused the enemy to be scattered. And the enemy turned one against the other. And the enemy defeated itself in Jesus' name. I want to tell you that this thing is going to backfire on the devil. What Satan planned for the destruction of mankind, God is going to use as a seed of revival in the name of Jesus Christ. In a moment, we are going to see a move of God. We are going to see the glory of God. We are going to see the healing virtue, the healing power of Jesus hit our planet like we have never seen. And I want to tell you that no man is going to get the credit. No name will be exalted other than the name of Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. And God has highly exalted Him and given Him the name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess of things in the heaven, things on the earth and things under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, come on, just think what's going to happen if Christians everywhere begin to call upon the name of the Lord because the Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Let's take a moment and call on the name of Jesus tonight. Come on, say that name. Say it. Say Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. We extol you who ride the clouds. We worship you. We magnify you. We elevate you. We exalt you. We magnify you. There is no God like you. Oh, come on, lift your hands wherever you are and worship Him at this hour, an hour of deliverance, an hour of breakthrough, an hour of victory, an hour of redemption, an hour of a mighty move of God. Oh, come on, come on. God doesn't move in a neutral atmosphere. God needs somebody to believe. One believer in God, make a majority. God will bypass a million unbelieving Christians and manifest Himself for one believer in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands for 10 seconds and give Him a praise. Hallelujah. All authority in heaven and earth is still His. I said all authority. The devil will regret what he has done. God is still in charge. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. So you're going to see God arise where He is magnified, where He is enthroned, where He is worshipped, where He is obeyed, 
where he has the preeminence. He's going to step into those churches and you will not have a stadium big enough that will contain what God is going to do. You will not build a building big enough that will contain what God is going to do. There's going to be a release of unusual favour upon the house of God for this end time revival. He still is El Shaddai more than enough. I know in the natural things may seem bad, but you have to look beyond the natural. You have to be look beyond your Jericho. You have to look beyond your prison. You have to look through the fire, through the valley, through the lion's den, through the storm. And keep your eyes on Jesus, who still is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord your peace. Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Jehovah Raha, the Lord your shepherd. Jehovah Shama, He's ever present. Jehovah Nisi, your banner, your victory. Hallelujah. We stand tonight in a place of victory. We fight tonight from a place of victory. We remind ourselves that the battle has been won and the foe is overcome. And as the church of Jesus Christ, we march on triumphantly, pushing back the forces of darkness. He still is Jehovah Tzitkinu, the Lord my righteousness. That means, Isaiah 54 verse 17, He says, in righteousness they will be established. And then God says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that is risen against me, judgment I will condemn. I want to say that to you tonight. Bible didn't say weapons will not be formed. It said the weapons that are formed will not prosper. You are His child. And even when you walk through the fire, God says, I will be with you. God says, I will sustain you. God says, the smell of smoke will not even be upon your body. God says, the fire does not have power over you in the name of Jesus, that that sickness will not have the final say. But your God will have the final say in the name of Jesus. Shout amen tonight there in Ghana, if you believe it in Jesus' name.